before her disappearance, Annie returned home from McKay Residential School, known in the U.S. as Indian Boarding Schools, in Dauphin, Manitoba, which she'd been attending since the autumn of 1973. She'd moved in with her brother, Fred Yassi, who clearly remembers the day due to it being Treaty Day, and many people were celebrating that day, including Annie by drinking. On June the 22nd, 1974, she was out with a man described as being at least 10 years her senior. The pair were drunk and been out celebrating Treaty Day. They got into a cab and headed to the nearby gravel pits, approximately three kilometers outside of Churchill, Manitoba, which were common known spots for camping, parties, and bonfires. According to the taxi driving, the unnamed man had to drag Annie out of the vehicle as she appeared to be passing out, and he requested that he pick them up later in the evening. According to the reports, the taxi driver was the last person to officially see Annie Yassi that night. When he returned to the gravel pits hours later, he found the man alone, who was more drunk than he had been earlier in the night. When Annie didn't arrive home that night, Fred didn't worry. He heard his sister mention she wanting to visit Eva at some point during her visit, so he simply thought that she had decided to do so after her celebrations. His assumption was that Annie was babysitting Eva's children while she worked at the clinic in the compound. Annie's co family was not initially concerned because of this, so when she didn't return that night, Eva visited Dene Village on June the 26th, 1974. It was then that everyone realized that Annie had not been staying with her sister and had in fact been missing for four days. That was when she was officially reported missing to the Churchill Detachment of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, otherwise known as the RCMP. An extensive search for Annie was conducted with investigators and volunteers scouring the area and outskirts by foot and by air. A search dog was even brought in to help. Despite the search occurring not long after, Annie was reported missing, and with those involved searching every house in Dene Village, nothing related to the case was uncovered. Both investigators and Ava confronted the man Annie was last seen with, despite being pressured by both parties to reveal what happened the night of June the 22nd. He claimed ignorance, saying that he had a memory lapse due to the lack of, or sorry, due to the amount of alcohol he'd ingested. He said, I don't remember. I don't remember nothing. I was drunk, Eva said, but he couldn't even look me in the eye, she says. The case would go cold not long after that. During the fall of 2014, officers with the Winnipeg Detachment of the RCMP contacted Annie's family to inform them that they were reopening the file. According to Eva, this was the first time anyone with the organization had contacted her since the initial investigation took place back in 1974. In June the 2016, the RCMP once again contacted Eva to request a DNA sample from her. Given the amount of time that had been passed since Annie was last seen alive, they were currently working on the theory that she had met with some sort of foul play and wished to have familial DNA on file in case they located her body. Eva has since claimed that there was a delay in investigators coming to collect the DNA from her, with the RCMP spokesperson countering saying, they were waiting for her to provide them with a list of names and siblings to take DNA samples from. It's currently unknown if the DNA was eventually connect collected or not. She has not been seen or heard from since the day she went missing. The family would like to at least locate her body so they can give her the traditional DNA funeral. But the worst, Evie, Eva Yessi says, it's simply not knowing the truth. The saddest part is not knowing what happened and why it happened, and not being able to bury her, Yassi says. That's what really bothers me. According to those who knew Annie, she was a kind and beautiful girl who was extremely close to her sister, Evie, Eva Yassi. The teenager loved to soak doll clothes and was a fan of the era's hippie look, often clouding herself in denim outfits. She is said to have had a love for the Christmas season, and she was sometimes known to sleepwalk, meaning Eva had to keep a close watch on her little sister. Anna's family believes that her case won't ever be solved, but would still like to find her remains and give her a proper burial. Her case has never been solved. Annie Yassi is an indigenous female from Sayasi Dene First Nation with brown eyes and black hair and was 5 feet 4 inches tall and 104 pounds when slender build when she went missing. She was 13 years old 
was and Annie Assey was born on July the 27th, 1960. She, along with her family, were members of the Sayasi Dene First Nation, which by the time she was born had been moved to a housing compound just outside of Churchill, Manitoba, Canada. Those with information regarding the case are asked to contact the cold case unit of the Winnipeg RCMP at 204-983-5461. Those wishing to remain anonymous can do so by calling Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-8477.